In the last video, I talked about two concepts, intuitive understanding and accurate thinking. Sometimes I refer to this as fluidity of mind, the ability to intuitively understand the different circumstances that you are experiencing on the day-to-day -day journey to bringing forth your vision, as well as accurately think about the thought processes that are brought forth as experience, as well as reinterpret the experiences on the journey to be more in harmony and in alignment with your vision. This brings us to faith and conviction, unwavering. So today we're going to go deeper into intuitive understanding and accurate thinking. And the premise is from actually a James Allen quote from his book, The Heavenly Life. He says, when he can no longer bear the burden of his accumulated learning, let a man leave his books, his science, his philosophy, and come back to himself. And he shall find within that which he outwardly sought and found not, his own divinity. Now, what we're referring to here is a combination of intuitive understanding and accurate thinking. It is the combination of reflecting on the effects in the outer world and connecting it back to the inner world of cause. Now, when we relate this to what Neville is referring to, he refers to a concept called states of mind. And creation is complete. And should we choose to go down this pathway to bringing forth what we desire, is to select in our imagination an outcome which represents a state. Within the state is an identity, a self-image, a concept of self. We can see ourselves being that person that we aspire to be in that imaginal scene. Last week, I had a conversation with one of my consulting clients. Some of you know that after I transitioned out of my IT business back in 2013, alongside creating this channel and putting out this content, I also went into the world of consulting. So one of my clients... He actually took his IT business to a really high level, doing eight figures in his business. So he stayed the course, and he went and created a very large organization. So when we have our sessions and our conversations, I don't talk about necessarily business building processes and cultivating relationships and products and services business model or any kind of things related to what we traditionally talk about in entrepreneurship. What we talk about is maintaining an ideal state of mind. The fundamental concept being assigning the meaning that you are experiencing, or more accurately put, assigning the meaning to what you're experiencing on the day-to-day -day journey from the vision. Now, our conversations are about maintaining that state of mind. So the way I do it is... I see himself as the next version of success that he wants to create. And in our conversations, as we converse for about an hour, we talk about different things from that perspective. I observe any kinds of dialogue, and he observes any kind of dialogue that seems to be contradictory to him already being that version of himself that is in that wish fulfilled, the next level of success in his business. Last year, Despite the circumstances that many were facing, he was still able to grow his business 20% and acquire a new building to house his team, his growing team. It's two floors, big office. And he was able to ascend past some of the convoluted circumstances that were occurring last year alongside some of the challenges that he was having with his previous location where he was housing his team. It could have made him very reactive. But instead, he maintained the state of mind and he was able to find the ideal location as well as continuously grow his business because he maintained that ideal state of mind. Now, when we tie this back into the James Allen quote, what he did was, and what we do in our conversations, is connect back to ourself, which is the source of all interpretation of any five sensory experience on this journey. This is what we refer to as intuitive understanding plus accurate thinking. Because from that intuitive understanding that all things exist, that this is all a journey to the realization of the vision, the accurate thinking, which is the conversations that flow, bring forth the ideas, hunches, and perspectives 
that allow him to make the moves to produce success. Now, this is what we're doing over and over again as we continue down this journey to bringing forth our success, is we hold true to the vision by, as Neville states here, stop thinking of and start thinking from. To think from the wish fulfilled is to realize that which you will never experience while you are thinking of it. When you put yourself in the state of the wish fulfilled and think from it, you are praying and in a way your reasoning mind does not know your wish will become a fact in your world. How would you feel if you were already the one you would like to be? The moment you catch that mood, you are thinking from it. So this is what we do with affirmation, inner dialogue, or imagination, is we put ourselves in the state of mind of the person that is one with that vision. And all we do is maintain that consistency towards the vision in whatever shape or form. For me, I talk about the concept of flow, which I brought up in the last video. This also facilitates maintaining that state of mind. So Neville stated that believing the world is taking place independent of our perception, we do not realize that our dreams are projecting themselves on the screen of space and that we are in conflict with our dreams. So what this means is that we have these different interpretations, which also a few videos ago I talked about the concept of instinct. And a lot of times the instinct is wired to fight or flight, insecurity or reactivity. And our goal is to connect with intuition, which is in alignment with conviction towards our vision, spirit of harmony, benefit for you, others, divine and evolution, and the true inner voice, which can also be referred to as intuitive understanding. Simply put, we connect back to our intuition by maintaining the state of mind. And how do you know this is true? Well, first of all, you'll notice that your inner conversations, your inner dialogue are about what you can do to bring forth your vision, how to interpret the certain circumstances that you are experiencing on the journey and connecting it back to your vision, seeing how it's in relation and in contribution. That's what James Allen was referring to when he said, when he can no longer bear the burden of his accumulated learning. This is because the subconscious mind can become so saturated with the opinions and different perspectives and perception altering understandings of other people that we might not be able to connect back to what we really know we have to do to produce the results or what is deep buried within us, the intuitive way of bringing forth our results. We forget these kinds of things. And we can get caught up in different philosophies and ways of looking at reality that are not in alignment with our vision. Understanding that these are all past theaters playing out based on previous concepts of self. One of the core attributes that we want to have as we continue this journey is self-reliance. Understanding that you can find within, more so each day, the answers that you are looking for when you went looking for it in the outer world. The outer world is based on our own perception. What we are interpreting about the outer world, people, environment, circumstance, and information, is based on our own interpretation within. And so is the way, the pathway, to the fulfillment of what we desire to experience. That's also found within. But when we seem to go looking for the answers in the outer world, we may find ourselves disconnected with that inner voice that will reveal the answer. Certainly you can get the answer in the outer world through a book, through certain information and so forth. But I always encourage finding this answer within yourself. So going back to the conversation that I was having with my client, he was able to create a lot of success in his business. Many who start down the entrepreneurial journey or stay on it for a period of time would love to have that level of success that he does. And what I can say is the distinct quality that he possesses, and he's probably listening to this right now as he watches my videos, is that he listens to himself. He trusts himself. Now, this is something that he had continued to develop on the journey. And as a result, he has an intuitive way. I know I have conversations with him and he has an intuitive way of understanding the different circumstances and it's accurate. Why? Because it relates to the results. 
He was able to grow his team. He was able to grow the business, serve his clients, and thus bring forth the success in a way that's concrete, tangible in the outer world. But one of the core things that he does, and him and I had this conversation because I wanted to share this in this video. I mentioned to him last week and reflect upon it to really share what is really going on. One of the things that he does really well is that he continues to maintain this ideal state of mind. And that was the reason why he wanted to have those sessions with me. It wasn't to tell him how to run a business and how to integrate all the different business building strategies. He wanted to go right to the source, the top of it all, which is thinking from that state of mind of the wish fulfilled. Now, as a result of maintaining that state of mind, few things end up happening. Number one is the conviction. A person is convicted to that result. They are connected, or as Neville states, they have assumed the feeling of the wish fulfilled. They're in that state of mind, and they remain in that state of mind. Number two is the intuition brings forth the spirit of harmony. All people, environment, circumstance, and information that is on the journey to the realization of the vision appears to be in the spirit of harmony. So they're one with the team, the vendors, the clients, and the different people that they deal with on the journey to produce the results. Also, the inner voice helps reveal the accurate thinking. Now, when I say accurate thinking, we're going to get into this in a moment. It's really about transcending doubt. And it's the doubt that a lot of times is stimulated by fight or flight, insecurity, or reactivity which we all a lot of times categorize as past instinctual behaviors or knee-jerk responses, which is related to previous versions of ourselves or previous states of mind. And we have the power to dwell in another state of mind, which is related to the vision. But we have challenges. So these challenges are because throughout the day we fluctuate and we go into different states. And one of the things that we want to remember is we are not the state, we are selecting the state. We are not the identity, we are selecting the identity. We are not the thoughts, we are selecting the thoughts. We are not our mind, we are using our mind. As stated, we have our two gifts, the gifts of speech and mind. So we are transcended to the gifts of speech and mind. We use the gifts of speech and mind to experience this outer world five sensory experience and externalize the reflection of our vision. Now, James Allen also says this in another way in his book, The Heavenly Life. So let's bring up the quote. A man who identifies himself with his possessions will feel that all is lost when these are lost. He who regards himself as the outcome and the tool of circumstance will weakly fluctuate with every change in his outward condition. And great will be his unrest and pain who seeks to stand upon the approbation of others. To detach oneself from every outward thing and to rest securely upon the inward virtue, this is the unfailing wisdom. Having this wisdom, a man shall be the same, whether in riches or poverty. So, maintaining the ideal state of mind. He also says, The one cannot add to his strength, nor the other rob him of his serenity. Neither can riches defile him who has washed away all the inward defilement, nor the lack of them degrade him, who has ceased to degrade the temple of his soul. Creation is complete. This outer world, we move down the journey, journey of life, bridge of incidents, to the fulfillment or the realization of the vision. Creation is finished, and we are transcendent too. Mind and speech that has the ability to, in imagination, select from the already complete, eternal creations. He says, creation is finished, and you have free will to choose the state you will occupy. Anything you imagine, what you desire to see brought forth, comes with an identity, an embodiment. You step into that identity. You are that person. You open up your eyes after you have imagined, and you are still in the same place, the living room, or lying in your bed. So the way to look at this is, it may appear that you are in the same world, but, however, you have actually gone into a different reality. You have now selected that state, and you are now in the process of realizing that state. He says, therefore, it is important to determine the ideas from which you think. 
Any concept that is accepted as true will externalize yourself in the outer world. So all day long, we are fluctuating in our states. We're going into different states, and we might not stay consistent. So going back to the conversation that I've had with my client, he recognized this, the importance of maintaining that state of mind, and thus his results reflected accordingly. And as Neville states, what is confronting you, says in what happens on the day-to-day -day journey, the bridge of incidents, he says that which is confronting you in your world now is the result of your past thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and imaginal activity. So we're imagining all the time. And this imagining is bringing us into different states of mind. And we are, as James Allen said, also, potentially, if we're not realizing who we really are, becoming the tool of circumstances or the opinions of the outer world, the outward condition. And that's why I refer back to this quote here that said, let a man leave his books, his science, his philosophy, and come back to himself. Those things are important. They're integration elements to live a harmonious life because they stimulate, they inspire, and they're part of the accurate thinking. But one of the things that happens is when we forget about our inner intuitive understanding and our own inner voice. So let's go back to the example with my client. If he identified with some of the opinions of some of the circumstances that were occurring last year, he might have found himself to be the tool of that circumstance. Instead, he maintained a certain state of mind, and as a result of maintaining that state of mind, he was able to find the accurate meaning within, interpretation, intuitive understanding, accurate thinking, to find a way to transcend past that circumstance and bring forth the result. That's because he was looking at whatever was being experienced in the outer world as something that he was interpreting based on perception. And he has the power to choose the interpretation, select the accurate interpretation. And Neville states, these appearances will continue in being as long as you give them life through your conscious awareness of them. He says, you must disregard the evidence of your senses as it pertains to any undesirable condition in your life. You must imagine and feel that you have already attained that which you want to experience rather than that which you do not want to continue being. This may appear difficult, yet you have probably exercised this principle unconsciously to produce negative results. So we're doing this all day long. We're imagining certain scenarios. We're walking around with inner dialogues. And what we want to do is maintain the state of mind to the best of our ability. We don't have to do this all the time because Chances are you fall into different states based on interpretations of certain circumstance or information, and you forget that you're able to connect back to yourself, center yourself, find the accurate meaning within, and move forward. And you still end up getting the end result. You don't have to be perfect at this. However, recognizing that this is the process that we're going through, which simplified, we can look at it like this. We select a state of mind, and we come back to ourself and find the intuitive understanding within of what the different circumstances mean, which can be a combination of also your accumulated insights, perspectives, knowledge, plus experience, because that's what translates into wisdom and having interpretations of past successes help us with moving forward towards our own success. But there's no substitute for living the philosophy, because once you live the philosophy, then you really understand the quote from James Allen. And I remember reading a while back on a site about James Allen, and when he had passed away, his wife, Lily Allen, spoke about him and said that he never wrote about anything unless he lived the philosophies. He exercised them, put them into practice, produced the results, and then he would teach about it. So in other words, these tried, tested, and true philosophies and principles have to be really understood by applying it and seeing it all the way to completion. Otherwise, what ends up happening is in our mind, we can get so caught up with the overthinking. And then what will happen is we will identify ourselves more with certain circumstances and information in the outer world rather than recognizing that we are transcendent to those identifications. We are subconsciously assigning ourselves certain states of mind that is causing us to identify with that information and then turning that information into a dogmatic, fixed way of being. 
So this can then result into overthinking and unnecessary complexity and rigidity of mind. So what we want is fluidity of mind. Fluidity of mind is intuitive understanding, and you do that by reflecting on different experiences that you have each day. And we do that by recognizing more so each day that things are in harmony and in contribution to your vision. And the accurate thinking is to think about how the different experiences you are having are unique to your state selected and that you have the ability to accurately understand the different things and you don't need the opinions of others to bring you into a realization. Certainly you can be inspired by that, but you can also find the accurate interpretation within. You know it's accurate interpretation when it brings you to a level of conviction, spirit of harmony, and also moving forward towards the objective. If you look at the things that a person might end up doing to produce business success, they could include things like building a certain product or service that is needed and useful in the marketplace, having certain kinds of referral relationships set up. Maybe they have certain kinds of partners or they found themselves in a certain market that is one that is harmonious to who they really are. We talk about this in certain concepts like the ikigai, which is doing what you love to do, what you're good at, what the world needs, we can get paid for. They might find themselves in certain business models that are highly profitable and so forth. Those are effects that are related to the bridge of incidents, that are related to the state and the identity. When the person embodies the state and the identity, they find it could be those things or other things to bring forth a business success. But the key is, to the best of your ability, maintaining that ideal state of mind. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.